Hello viewers and welcome back to another episode. I've been searching now for something on eBay for quite some time, a small Sony um, colour Trinitron television. Uh, they seem to be quite hard to get hold of and when they do pop up from time to time they go for quite a lot of money. Um, you can be looking for anything between sort of 50 to 200 pounds for one actually. And um, the model that I've been looking for was a Sony KV6000BE and I finally managed to get hold of one. There we go, in the box as well. Um, stumbled across this on eBay uh, a couple of months back now. Um, it was sold to me as untested, um, although the guy did say he tried to power it up with a 12 volt power supply. Um, but the adapter that he sent with it was actually the wrong one. Um, the power supply for this is quite particular to the actual television itself but in the way that it fits on, because that it clips on on the back. Uh, strangely enough at the time, when I won this on eBay, I managed to find out the model number of the power supply and I typed it on eBay and there's actually one on there, I couldn't believe it. Um, I think it was a starting with like a five and I think I offered them what they was asking and, and they accepted. Um, that actually came in the post before the television itself did. Then the TV arrived and I tried it and it actually worked. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was very, very lucky. Um, there's no instruction manual with it. Some of the packaging is missing, but it has got the box. So um, let's open it up, shall we, and have a look inside. As you can see, it's got quite an early serial number there, um, number 87 in the run, which is quite unusual actually, because these things are usually made in the millions. So I've obviously got a very early one there. The box is pretty plain looking, uh, not much on it, just a picture of the TV. That's the power supply. It's an AC1200. I think there are other variants of this, but it actually clips on on the back. I had to bend the clip actually slightly because uh, I actually pressed it in it wasn't popping back out and it's still a little bit iffy now actually. So I could do with opening that up and actually having a look inside and uh, freeing it up a little bit. But that's very heavy in itself. As you can see some of the packaging is missing. Still got the original bag though. And here is the television itself. It's in pretty good condition actually, considering how old it is. Um, I think this came out around about 1981 or 1983. Unfortunately, I don't have the instruction manual, which normally um, is a good indicator of age because I have a date on the bottom on the Sony's. Got an earphone socket on the side there. Around the back, we've got composite video out, audio out, video in, and audio in. It's using the old BNC connectors there, which is what it uh, was quite popular back in the 70s and 80s. I think it's still, it was still used right up into the professional days actually, before everything went digital. Uh, 12 volt DC input there, that's the aerial input for the uh, telescopic aerial. It takes a battery, uh, it's an MP1 battery, which is exactly the same as what the um, Sony F1 Betamax portable recorder used because um, I think this was actually meant to go with that. It was probably sold as an, an accessory for that at the time. But, uh, obviously with it having a video out, that means you can pass a signal through onto another monitor and have the same image on multiple monitors. There's the top of it. So you've got a source select there, TV or video. Uh, operate, channel or charge, and this slides back open. There we've got the tuning mode there, they're doing the presets for the tuner, some LED indicators there, contrast, brightness and colour, and the horizontal hold, and the television system, obviously we've got it selected to the UK there. Quite an unusual flap actually, the way that it opens and closes. Carry handle. That's the front of the TV. Volume up and down, program select, power on off. And the stations there, 1 to 14. Not that there ever was that many stations, certainly not in England anyway, back in the 80s. I think up for a long time it was just three channels in the 80s until Channel 4 came along. And then we've got the underside there, the little foot, so you can make it stand up. 
So then I suppose the next thing to do would be to try it out and see what the picture quality looks like. Um, I thought about different things to try on it and I think I'm going to go with the PlayStation 1. Why not? Um, I've had this now for about 20 years. It's starting to get a little bit yellow. But uh, it's got a composite cable with it so I'll go straight into the back. Uh, I'll just need to find myself a BNC connector and we'll give it a try. So this just clips on the back. Let me plug in the DC cable. Let's try Project X. It's a very sharp, clear picture. it's quite possible that the disc is a little bit scratched. Well, I think that looks pretty good, considering how old it is. So certainly a lot different to the uh, Amiga version. I think that'll do for that test. Well there you have it, it's all working okay, it's got a lovely crisp picture. Um, I've been very lucky on this occasion, as I said uh, before it uh, was sold to me as I'm working, uh, even though the guy did say he had tried it with a 12 volt power supply, it must have been the wrong one, because it came to life straight away when I plugged in the correct power supply. Uh, all in I think I paid around about £70 for this. Um, they can, like I said before, they can go sort of upwards to 150 to 200 pounds for an example like this. One thing I did notice, however, was that the um, brightness and the contrast were set almost to maximum, so it's um, been run quite hard. 
But saying that though, back in the day when these were sold initially, they were more sold for like caravanning and bedrooms, that kind of thing, for portability. So it wouldn't have had an awful lot of use anyway. Well, I think that just about wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Incidentally, if you're into this kind of thing, vintage gadgets and gizmos, old computers, repairs, vintage toys from the 70s and 80s, which is my childhood era, you may want to consider liking and subscribing to my channel. That way you'll get notifications on any future videos I publish. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you.